Okay, so we'll move to the next part of the lesson 2.4. We are going to learn now about measures of spread. <clears throat> okay, so what do we mean by measures of, uh, measures of spread? So it, it measures how spread out your data values are actually. Okay, so previously measures of location, median, quartiles, percentiles are measures of the location, so where you exactly are. But measures of spread tells you how spread out your data values are. Okay, so for the measures of spread, basically, you have uh, learned these. Uh, so the first measure of spread you have learned is the range. Are you familiar with the range? What is the range? For measures of spread, the first one you learn is range. Basically, the range is the difference between the largest value and the smallest value, right? So largest value, you take the largest value in your data set and you subtract with the smallest, highest value minus the smallest value. This gives the range, okay? And then the next measure of spread that we use is interquartile range, IQR. The IQR represents the interquartile range in short. So interquartile range is the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile, basically Q3 minus Q1. Okay, interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. So these are things that you might have definitely heard. Okay, so this is a new one. The next uh, uh, measures of uh, the next measure of spread I'm, I'm, I'm going to introduce to you is uh, kind of new. The interpercentile range, do you see? Range and interquartile range are familiar to you, okay? But interpercentile range is new. Okay, look at this. The interpercentile range is the difference between the values for two given percentiles. So that might be something for you to note down because it's new for you. Okay, so interpercentile range is what? The difference between the values for two given percentiles. So interpercentile range. Interpercentile range B equal to Px minus Py. So Px is the x percentile, you subtract it from the y percentile, and then you can get the interpercentile range. Okay, so for example, the 10th to 90th interpercentile range is often used uh, since it is not affected by extreme values, but still considers 80% of the data in its calculation. Okay, so we will talk about these extreme values at the uh, later point. Okay, so they say here. So basically the interpercentile range, what you do is you take the, you take two different percentiles and you subtract them, okay? Okay, let's go for some questions now, okay? So now when you're finding the quartiles and the percentiles, you need to follow the rules that I applied, uh, that I taught you earlier, which is uh, the rules must be strictly followed for discrete data and the specific rules need to be followed for continuous data. Okay, so let's go to exercise two week question number one. Uh, I think you can see the moment uh, you see uh, question number one, uh, you can see this what? This is discrete data or continuous data. So you can see immediately this is continuous data. Okay, it's immediately continuous data, the length of slow worms in millimeters and you can see it's, uh, the data are given in grouped uh, ranges. And now the other thing is when you, before you go to apply continuous data, you must check whether the boundaries need to be Corrected. So over here, what do you what do you think? Do we need to correct the boundaries? Yes, right. I think we need to correct the boundaries. So we have to correct the boundaries, and you have to uh, get the answers. Okay. So let's correct the boundaries and make the new table. Okay. So you can see I have built the table here, uh, the corrected table with the corrected class boundaries. Uh, and so since we are supposed to find the mean, so I read through the question. They are asking me to find the mean as well. So I have added some extra columns here. Uh, cumulative frequency is anywhere required when you're trying to find the quartiles and percentiles. <clears throat> Mid value and FX is there because we're trying to find the mean. Okay, so frequency, I have filled out the frequency and the, uh, the frequency and the length, the length and the frequency. So now it's time to fill the cumulative frequencies. So first one, four, <clears throat> four plus four, that's eight, eight plus two, 10. 10 plus 7, 17 plus that 20 is 37. 37 plus <clears throat> 24 is uh, 61. 61 plus 10, that's 71. Okay, is that okay? <clears throat> okay, then let's get the mid value. So mid value is where you have to add these two uh, lengths and divide by two, right? So you have to add the two lengths, uh, 124.5. Hundred and twenty four point five, you add with hundred and thirty nine point five. Okay, hundred and twenty four point five, you add with hundred and thirty nine point five, and then you divide by two. 
So you can see the middle valley is 132. Mid valley is 132. Likewise, the other valleys, uh, 139.5 to 154, so that's 147. Right, the next one, 162, 177, 192, 207, 222. So these are the midpoint values. You simply add the two boundaries and divide by two. And then let's get the effect. The effect is where you multiply the frequency with the mid value. So you multiply the frequency four with the mid value 132. So the answer is 528. Okay, so this answer is 528. The next one, four times 147, 588. Two times 162, 324. Seven times 177, 1,239. Uh, 20 times 192, 3,840. Uh, 24 times 207, 4,968. Uh, 10 times 222, 2,220. So this is the uh, effects column, okay? So I just made a complete table to help me with everything. But I think for part A, we really don't need that. Okay, so for, for part A, they say work out how many slow worms were measured. So actually that's really easy. How many slow worms were measured? That's the total frequency, right? So how many slow worms were measured? You have measured. Uh, I think you can see the total frequency. Total frequency is 71. So 71 slow worms were measured. Okay, part B. Estimate the interquartile range for the lengths of the slow worms. So obviously, estimate the interquartile range in the sense you have to find Q3 minus Q1. Interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1, which means what? You must find the Q3 and Q1 value. Shall we find them? Q1 is n divided by 4. So we now found there were 71 slow worms. So 71 divided by 4 is how much? 71 divided by 4 is 17.75. So, you know, and now our data, do we, are we working with discrete data or continuous data? Clearly, you can see we are working with continuous data, right? So, you have to go for interpolation. Shall we go for interpolation quickly and find the Q1 figure? So, Q1 So, Q1 is 17.75 uh, so Q1, 17.75, you know, you're supposed to check this value from the, against the cumulative, cumulative frequency. So the first value that passes 17.75. Four doesn't pass, eight doesn't pass, 10 doesn't pass, 17 is not enough because I'm trying to go for 17.75. 17 is lower than 17.75, which means I have to go for 37. Guys, do you follow that? It's because 17.75 is higher than 17. So I can't take 17. So you should be going to the 37 group. Do you agree? 17.75, the 37 is the first cumulative frequency that passes 30, uh, that passes 17.75. Uh, so the group, the interested with the group here, the Q1 falls within the uh, group, uh, 184.5 to 199.5. 184.5 to 199.5. And what are the cumulative frequencies? Below 17.75, the, the cumulative frequency is 17. Take it from the cumulative frequency column, okay? And the value uh, exceeding 17.75 cumulative frequency is 37. Okay, now let's go for interpolation. Q1 minus 184.5 divided by 199.5 minus 184.5 equals 17.75 minus 17 divided by 37 minus 17. Uh, can I know how much it is? Q1 minus 104.5. 199.5 minus 184.5. 15, 17.75 uh, minus 17, 
over 37 minus 17, that is 3 over 80. In the cal, that's 3 over 80. So Q1 is going to be 3 over 80 multiplied by 15 plus 184.5. So how much is the answer for Q1? Exact answer we get in the cal. What is it? 186.375, is it? 186.375. Uh, check on that again. 3 into 15 plus 184.5. 185 point, isn't it? 185.0625. Uh, so this answer has to change, right? 180. 5.0625. Let's keep it for now, the whole figure. Okay, so let's get Q3 as well. So Q3 is 3n over 4, which is 3 times n is 71 divided by 4. How much is that? 3 times 71 over 4 is uh, how much? 50. 3.25, yeah, 53.25 value, okay. So now let's again go for interpolation. So Q3, the upper quartile, the cumulative frequency is 53.25, go for the values. So 53.25, go for the cumulative frequency and try to find the first cumulative frequency value who passes 53.25. So you can see the first cumulative frequency who passes 53.25 is 61. The group, the respective group is 199.5 to 214.5. So the respective group, 199.5 to 214.5. And the cumulative frequencies, let's mark it. Uh, and then the uh, cumulative frequency less than 53.25, 37 and high is 61, right? 37 and 61. So then here we get Q1 minus 199.5 over 214.5 to 199.5 equals 53.25 minus 37 over 61 minus 37. So what do we get for Q1? So you can simplify. I think we get for Q1, uh, sorry, Q3, not Q1. This is Q3. So I get for Q3. Uh, how much is it? Is it 209.656? 209.656. So interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. Q3 is 209.656 minus Q1 is 185.0625. Subtract and you can then add the final answer only you should give it to 3SF. Remember, uh, Q1 and Q3 are not final answers. That's why I took full decimals here. But the final answer, you can correct it to 3SF and give the answer. How much is the answer corrected to 3SF? corrected to 3SF. Isn't it? Twenty-four point five nine, so twenty-four point six, yeah, millimeters. The length in the quartile range. Okay, so the length I think is measured in millimeters. Yeah, so twenty-four point six uh, uh, is the interquartile range given to three years. Yes. 